Okay, let's come back to the lecture. Uh, let me add the black screen again. Uh, so I thought since since this took a little bit longer in the first half of the lecture, we skip chapter 10 because I don't think it's really that important. And then we have enough time just so that you know the basics of uh, Ramsey theory. Um, and here the order, the, the title of the chapter 11 is order from this order, uh, Ramsey's theorem. Um, and uh, so let me let me kind of follow up uh, the way that Matuszek presents it. Um, so I guess you heard already in this lecture mentioned the name Paul Erdős. Um, so from 1913 to 1996, he was one of the most uh, uh, prolific uh, mathematicians of the, the new time. I think only Euler published more than Erdős, but Euler didn't have to go through a review process. So that's maybe an unfair comparison. Uh, Erdős was known to collaborate with a huge number of people. So there is something called Erdős number, which is like if you if you're Paul Erdős, you have Erdős number zero, and if you pu uh, published someone with someone, uh, if you published with Erdős, you have Erdős number one, and if you publish with someone with Erdős number i, your Erdős number is i plus one, and you look for the lo lowest i. Um, I think I have Erdős number three, but it gets more and more difficult to to have Erdős number two because. Uh, he's not alive anymore, so ad having Erdős number one is. Some people appear, and they they still there's still papers appearing with the name Paul Erdős on it because they say, oh, we started this with Erdős like a long time ago. Um, but uh, so Erdős apparently so uh, tells a story um, about Wilhelm Röntgen who invented these X-rays. In German, we call them also Röntgenstrahlen. What do you call them in Dutch? Röntgenstrahl, so so self so als, als, als in doubts. Um, and he, and Röntgen invented them in 1895. Um, okay, that's really a long time ago. But there was a, a, a different person, namely William Krukas. I I don't know this guy. Uh, but he made a similar observation. So he had these these array somehow, uh, uh, you know, making. Uh, being in his laboratory and then damaging some of his plates, and and this William Crook said, put the plate somewhere else so that they don't get they're damaged by the rays. Now, how stupid of him, right? He could have been the inventor. They could have been called Crook's rays instead of Röntgenstrahlen. Uh, uh, so there are two morals of this. Um, Number one, be ready. If you see something unusual, if you see something, hmm, what's going on here? Investigate it. Be open. I think Erdős always said, be open. Um, that's that's uh, like observation number two, or or moral from Erdős number. Number one and moral number two is um, that the origins can be a modest and uh, trifling. So I I use the word from the book, although I'm not really sure what trifling exactly means. But the idea is you start with something almost trivial. It looks like uh, a puzzle or something. Um, and you may may stop there and say, oh, that was a fun puzzle. Or you can investigate it more, and then suddenly a whole branch of mathematics come out of it. And Ramsey theory is is really now a, a branch of mathematics. There are books written about it, uh, but it all started with with a modest uh, and small small observation. And and I want to start with this observation. Uh, so imagine you're at a party. 
right? So maybe uh, there could be parties for different reasons, and and there are six people coming. And maybe I can I can turn this into a magic trick. So each of you um, maybe take a piece of paper uh, and draw six points on it and connect some of them with lines and some not. So like think of this as edges and vertices. Uh, but everyone does by themselves, okay? As you like. You can add more or less edges. Um, so let's say I, I do something random here. Um, but you do something arbitrary as well. And now my claim is, and, and these edges, so points are our people and edges are uh, acquaintance. And my claim is there are three people uh, acquainted, mutually acquainted. Or three uh, mutually strangers. Okay, so everyone drew uh, uh, what they have. Okay. Um, so for me, I don't see three mutually acquainted, so there must be three mutually strangers. And I think I found them. I think for me, those are three three strangers. What about you guys? You found your three mutual acquainted or three mutual strangers? Although I didn't know what you were drawing. Okay, it's not so exciting, I guess, for mathematicians or, or for for people following this course here. Um, but the principle is clear, right? Uh, and the proof will be also relatively easy. Um, but but this is the the thing is the there is this order. There can be anything you like. Um, but we will find order. We will find these clicks. We will find triangles, either one or the other. Um, yeah, and we define alpha of G as the largest independent set of G and omega of G as the largest click. G. So you remember we had alpha and uh, W of G already at the very beginning of the lecture, and we didn't really know where these names came from, but it's really that these names come from the graph equivalent. You remember independent set? Did we mention this? Yes. And you remember click? We mentioned this. I see some nodding. Ooh, yes. Okay, okay, so let me, so click or uh, uh, like uh, everyone knows each other. So uh, like K, 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 K. So but this notation we had K subscript K, right? Um, And then some some easy theorem. Uh, geograph. Then. Uh, on six vertices and alpha of G is three or omega of G at least three. Um, so what we do is we pick u arbitrary
and then we have neighbors and non-neighbors. So far so good. And then we go through some cases. So these are, yeah. Should I write down what A and B are? Non neighbors. A is non neighbor and B is neighbor. And then we go through some cases. Case one A is at least three. And then one A. Um, A is a click. Then we're done because we found a click of size three. Um, One B, A has one non edge. Right, and then we're done as well because we have, let's call this non edge VW, and then we have U, VW form R independent. And now we play the, the whole game backwards. Case two, B is at least three. Yes. No. Yeah, otherwise I would have written N, N U complement, but that would not have been correct because then I have to write N U complement except U. So it could be that B is an independent set, then we're done. And, oh, sorry, this is case 2A, and then 2B is B has edge uh, V, W, and then we have U, V, W, and we have um, a click. And we're done. And uh, so we used here the pigeonhole principle, but uh, so either A or B has at least uh, three vertices, right? Yes, Flo? Um, for any graph with six vertices. I guess if you have more than six vertices, it's also fine. Thanks, that was a detail I only added later. Okay, and, and now we are ready to prove the full Ramsey theorem. And and somehow the the corollary. Oh no, no, yeah. So now we go to section eleven point two Ramsey's theorem for graphs. So let uh, and then theorem eleven point two point one G is typically is a, is a graph and the number of vertices are at least some appropriately chosen number. Um, then we have the click number of G is at least K or the stable number or the independence number is at least L.
Okay. So, and spoiler alert, this is exactly the same proof, but we have to replace the number three by appropriate binomial and those other three by the other appropriate binomial. Um, and then we have to use that binomial to add up in the right way. Um, So we, we do induction on K plus L. Um, uh, so the base cases are either K equals one or L equals one. Um, Um, and then what we have is that K plus one, do I have this right? Is it a plus here? I think I miss wrote it. I think there is a minus. There's a minus, okay. Okay. Um, let me mark this in my notes. Um, so K plus L minus two shoes uh aha let's do l plus one shoes uh k equals one so this is then true zero and this is always one and if we have one vertex this vertex by itself is either an independent set or a click i mean we can regard it as either so the base cases here are clear and and this k plus l equals two, we can think of, you know, we we go in this way. And so when we when we want to do this line here, we, we can assume um, so basically this is our assumption. And and then uh, This is what we need to show. So this is how our induction goes, right? Here, K plus L just goes up by one for each of those lines. So if we if we want to show this case, we can assume those cases are covered already. So specifically, what we will do is we will use those two cases. So let's say we have k comma l, assume k comma l minus one and k minus one l already done. Um, and now we do exactly the same as we already did before. Uh, we just need to make the division appropriately. So we define N1 as equals to K plus L minus three choose K minus one. Uh, and N2 equals K plus L minus three K minus two, um, and then it follows that n equals n1 plus n2. 
And this we write in a in a funny way. We write it as one plus n one minus one plus n two minus one plus one. Okay, this looks funny, but it's it's just going to be exactly the same as before. We just want to want to make these numbers work out. And and for this year, maybe you can just trust me, but it has to do uh, with the Pascal's triangle. It's just Pascal's triangle. Right, we go one up here and one up here. Uh, and we take the bigger of the two. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, Let me erase something. So we take U again and uh, this is B, so neighborhood of U and A is uh, neighborhood of U except U. So the non-neighbors. And now we need to be careful. And and as usual, U was arbitrary. Um, and so we know A is at least of size n1, uh, sorry, at least n1, and size of b is at least n2. And to see this, think of this as uh, u, right? This one guy. Then these are the remaining vertices. Um, and you could have a and b like Think of this maybe as A, and this is B, while in the last vertex, we need to put either to A or B. I don't know if that's helpful. But that's where, where this formula comes from and, and why this is true. And then the cases are exactly the same. Case one. Uh, so here's an or size of a at least one, and then uh, it follows that uh, so a could have a click of size um, k. Or A has independent set of size L minus one. And in both cases, we're done. Right here, we're done. And here uh, at U, let's call this independent set I u plus i has size l. And and these two cases we have because uh, a is large enough. Here we use the deduction. And case two says b, not equal to n2, 
and goes analogously. Um, and this finishes the proof. So we kind of, uh, I, I still want to finish the lower bound. But it's really the same proof. It's just that yeah, you have to work out these numbers correctly. Um, so I wanted to say a few things, namely, so this proof was done something like 1935 or so. And it gives an upper bound of uh, this Ramsey number, RK. Uh, so this is, is a, uh, yeah, the, the number of how large does a graph need to be in order to contain either a click or an determinant sense of size K. And this gives something of, I think, four to the K. And like a week ago, and, and now 2023, uh, in March, we have now R to the K, a small or equal to four minus epsilon to the K. So this proof is, is easy, right? I, I don't know. Uh, it, it shouldn't be too hard, I feel. But now this proof works for epsilon roughly two to the minus seven. So two to the minus seven is yeah, maybe one over 100, so like minus. Um, so it's really a very marginal improvement. And this proof has, uh, this paper has uh, 57 pages. So uh, what I want to say here, so one thing is, this is still a very active area of research. And it is often the case that you find something almost trivial, like a vanilla solution, and you know it's not the best we can go for. Uh, and then just to improve it a teeny tiny bit is horrendously difficult. But there were also other extremal problems where suddenly someone improved it and the, the proof was only eight pages. Uh, and then it's embarrassing because it just meant no one really looked at it for a very long time. Um, so that's a version of Edo Shekeris, which, which was was improved, um, was made tight. Uh, okay, and, and now what we want to do is, is find also a lower bound. And here we use a probabilistic method. And I go straight to the theorem. And the condition is a little bit strange. So it says, if n choose k times 2 to the 1 minus k choose 2 small as, as 1, uh, then RK is at least N. So RK is this Ramsey number. Yes. N choose K. Um, times two to the one minus k choose two, smaller than one. So it's written in a silly way, but uh, corollary, so the corollary is a little bit longer even to prove than the proof of the theorem. And because I have only 50 minutes, let me skip this. It's just some computations. R to the k is at least uh, two to the k over two. So we see our lower bound here 
is exponentially far away from the upper bound we have, and we don't really know how to close this gap. Um, but let me prove the theorem. Um, as follows. Yeah, uh, let G uh, equals V comma E, a random graph. And and I have to specify what that means. I say for, for all E element B choose two, uh, flip a fair coin. Right, so I go through edge, edge, and I say this edge is in, this edge is out, this edge is in, this edge is in, this edge is out, and so on. So far, so good. Um, and and it's a little bit curious because um, so apparently this proof came only twelve years after after the upper bound um, from Erdős. It's apparently according to Matuszek, the first application of the probabilistic method. Uh, and there's no no different different proof known than using the probabilistic method. And uh, it's it's very coarse. So one, it's coarse in two ways. It's coarse in the sense that we have this giant random graph, right? And and just by luck, we know it's going to do what we want. Uh, this is I mean, this should not be the tight example. And in the other sense, we we estimate probabilities, and we will estimate them in a stupid way. Uh, and still, that's the best we can do for the lower bound. Okay, so let's say k is a subset of vertices uh, with size of capital K is little k. So what's the and we define the event AK, so here the subscript is a capital K, uh, so, and this is the event that K is a click or independent set. Uh, so what's the probability of AK, ha A AK happening? This we can compute explicitly. Well, we flip a coin, right? If we want it to be a click, what does a coin flip need to say? It always needs to be the same, right? So this is 2 to the minus k choose 2 uh, plus 2 to the minus k choose 2. So either it's always edge or it's always non-edge. And now what we want is the probability that there's any click or independent set, right? So we just go through all of those possible events. And so there is now a really silly way to, to up about this. We had inclusion exclusion formula, but there's something which is much more stupid than inclusion exclusion formula. So we have the probability of the union of some events. So we would say, what's the probability that this happens or that happens or that happens or this happens? How can we upper bound this probability? Yes? Exactly. And always. Um, so this is called a union bound.
right? And and we have a lot of overlaps of of events. But the the stupid thing is, despite the fact that this bound is very coarse, it's often the best we can do. And and also in this case, we we don't know how to do it better. But maybe I also say this incorrectly. So k is very small compared to n. So if we have two events, they typically are independent. So maybe that's the reason why why we uh, uh, we don't count too much too much. Um, now this we calculated right, and this is some number that only depends on little k, not on capital K. So we can replace it by um, what we have here, two to the one minus k choose two. And this year we can also replace because now we know how many there are, namely n choose k. And now we want this to be small. We know this is smaller than one. Why do we know this? It's uh, written as the assumption of the theorem, right? That's our assumption. So this means probability of G uh, having click or independent set is smaller than one. Right. So I go through all possible random graphs, and the probability that um, there is a K set, the independent set, or or a click is smaller than one means immediately um, uh, this immediately says there exists such a G. Oh yes, because, um, or I should say without this property. Right, if not, if the probability is smaller than one, means there is one without that property, and that's exactly the one that we were looking for. Okay, so I finished now just five minutes before the end, um, but I also did a little bit short of a break, and and I think five minutes would not be enough to do uh, another proof. So uh, the last topic next week will be um, like my research topic because we want to have also I didn't didn't really want to add more content because I think. The basic things about discrete uh, mathematics you know now. And I want you also to prepare for the exam. Uh, I will give kind of a guest lecture about my research, which is uh, has also some relation to discrete mathematics, although it's not exactly discrete mathematics. Um, and then I thought next week, Wednesday, we can do a mock R exam where all that happens is you pretend you write the exam and in that way you can test yourself how good you are. Um, but of course we wouldn't be able to give you feedback. Um, but there could also be the alternative that we just do a question answer round next week, Wednesday. Any preferences? Yes? Well, there are two things. Are you going to force yourself at home to do it? 
that's you. Maybe not everyone does it. It would be a good time to really test yourself. And you, we can use peer grading. Maybe your peers can give you feedback. Um, but I don't know how you're seeing, seeing this. Uh, Wilfried, any preferences? But this also had to do with people didn't want to do it, right? It had to do with... Uh, I felt lots of people were hesitant to, to do it rather than uh, capable. Okay, but uh, I mean, it's it's for me, I don't care, right? So it's, guys, your decision. Floor said she would like the mock exam. Uh, so maybe in the remaining four minutes, we can also see if there are other suggestions. Still a mine? Okay. So who is, yeah, okay. Uh, I, so you like the, the second option? Anything else you want to add to it? Okay, Martin. Okay, so let's, any more voices to this or shall we come to a vote? So democracy does not mean you do what the majority says. It means you have a process of discussion which convinces the majority to do the right thing. Uh, so who is for the mock interview? You changed your mind. Great, very good. Good arguments were given. Who is for this question answer next week, Wednesday? Okay, who is for we don't have it at all? I can sleep out on a Wednesday, finally, sleep in. Okay, so we will have it, and we will have question answers. And uh, yeah, I think the easiest is you just uh, tell me the questions on the spot. And typically, we have enough time to answer all of them. Okay, see you uh, next week.